Hey, this is Michelle. Thank you all for this awesome opportunity. It's really interesting that I'm going right after Yeah, it's good timing. Yes. It's going to be just a continuation. Cool. Um, so the title of my project is Feeling Cooperation and Creativity, Mapping Alternative Systems of Energy and Community Empowerment. So I'll just give you a little personal background. I kind of approach this subject from a very practical sense. Um, about five years ago, I learned how to make biodiesel out of waste vegetable oil in Chicago using a method developed by Loyola University there. Um, but it's a community laboratory. So ever since then, I discovered the power of this extremely, well, it's almost carbon neutral to create, and um, it can be done in anyone's garage. So this just opened my eyes to all the possibilities of how communities can become more self-sufficient, more empowered, and um, less reliant on global fossil fuels. So I, initially I prepared this in Spanish. I thought we were going to be all doing it. <laughs> so thank goodness. Um, but basically my, the main goal of my project is to create a bridge between all the different stakeholders that produce energy and the people who use energy. Um, so institutions includes universities. It also includes the government, um, communities. <coughs> and groups like um, businesses that also, they want to um, profit from the production of energy. And my goal is to create linkages in between these using art and using cultural practices that could aid in the technolo te excuse me, technological diffusion of these new practices that are being developed all over the world but they don't always reach the community level. Um, so my goal is to bring them there or document the practices of that. So next, here's some tiny little questions. Um, <laughs> basically, I want to dismantle the barriers between of technological diffusion. So that's going to be my main guiding question. All of the, just ignore all of these. How do we, what is blocking all of the new technologies and new discoveries from reaching the people who need them most? Um, so I'll talk a little bit about my main final products that I'm hoping to create, um, because basically I want this to be a copyable model. I'm not sure if that's a word. Um, a model that can be implemented in other places as well. Um, First off, whoops, I'll be creating some open source GIS files um, that compare uh, access to energy and access to resources to create your own energy. So for example, in the US, this is a map. There's tons of archived files um, that are accessible to the public um, that allow us to analyze who has resources and who are they benefit? Who are they benefiting? This is a map of that shows um, indigenous land in yellow, and then all of those little blue and red and purple points are different alternative or renewable energy projects. So you can see where they intersect. So I hope to. I'm inspired by all of this. I hope to create something similar um, in Chile, where the files, the open source files, are not as available. Or they're just not as plentiful because there is less work that's been done. Um, next, one of my final products will be to have workshops and community happenings. I guess that's how you translate it with them. Um, I think it's really important. Oh, this photo didn't show up. Um, it's really important to have these face-to-face -face interactions. Um, this was a photo of a laboratory in Timuco where I worked. It's um, a community laboratory uh, where they create biodiesel using that same method developed by Loyola University that was actually brought down to Chile by um, some people that I've worked with. So this is in Washington, D.C., where we are building a biodiesel lab. I'm 
currently, well, I was living there just a, just a day ago. And um, in DC, we're using biodiesel as um, workforce development. So connecting people who don't have jobs or just to change the economic landscape, um, as well as empowering using or allowing people to create their own energy. Um, so the talleres, the workshops, are really where I think a lot of different stakeholders can come together. And I'll talk about one of my case studies here. Um, but it's basically where you could find a professor and a young kid in the same room learning the same thing. Um, let's see. This is the one of my other final products is I'll be creating um, documentary videos and animations to help teach people on a web portal. So this is an example of one that was developed by the University of Antofagasta. And they created, it's on YouTube. It's an animation of how um, biofuel from micro, microalgae is created. Um, so I hope to work with the communities in developing um, ways that make the technology a lot more accessible to communities. Okay, so now that I'm done with, that's all the final products. Now I'll explain, I'm going to be working in three different regions, and in each region I'll be working in three phases. So the first one is Valparaíso, the second one is Antofagasta, and the last one is La Araucanía. And um, each of them have developed different ways of technological diffusion. Some are more advanced than others, um, but Basically, my first phase will be I'll be collecting data, I'll be analyzing, or just um, identifying the differences between resource accessibility um, to new technology. And then the second phase is I'll be creating the maps and asking the question, well, why? Why does one community have less access than another? What are the barriers? And analyzing them in um, visual with um, visual maps. And then the third phase, after I've collected and analyzed, um, I'll create the workshops with the community, with, in conjunction with the community and um, the institutions. So now I'll go on to just a few examples that I've collected from of the people who I'm going to be working with. Um, the first one is in Valparaíso, and I chose to start here because they have um, there are some centers there that are really connected with the community, so I thought that would be a, a good place to start so that I could get some examples. Um, right here, they're working with solar-powered ovens, um, and they hold community workshops where people can learn how to cook using solar energy. Um, so it's just one example of something that's really on the ground, really grassroots. Um, it's a technology that everybody can um, the second one is, this is, I think, the, the mecca of my project because this, I don't know if you guys have heard of this development in um, Antofagasta where it's a huge team of businesses, universities, and um, community stakeholders that have developed this giant plant and they produce biofuel out of microalgae. So, um, the reason I'm really interested in this is not just because it's a completely new technology, but they also um, have developed some workshops for students to learn how to do it. So I'm really excited to start working with them. Um, and funny enough, one of the professors that helped found all of this is um, one of my first affiliates from Temuco. So that's where I'll be. Um, during the final phase. And um, so this is, this is him, Rodrigo Navia. He does a lot of research on um, how to use recycled oil and create um, new energy sources. Um, so that's him speaking in Valpo. There's, um, there's a lot of buzz about renewable energy in Bad Alganía. The Minister of Energy just spoke there last November, I believe. There was a Feria de Dentro de Mejía, um, where I guess he mentioned this statistic where basically this region is not reaching its potential at all. So I'm 
really curious to see what those barriers are, um, and also to work in this laboratory. It's called the Bioren, 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 can I say? Um, laboratory where um, Professor Navia is doing conducting all of his research. So um, I know that when I first met him, he had no idea that we were we had our laboratory um, already set up in La Branza, and um, so he was really excited to get those connections started. Um, and um, this is, yeah, so this will be the final phase. And then upon the completion of that, I hope to somehow, whether it's online or maybe even face to face, I know there's kind of a large distance between those two, um, create a forum where everyone can share um, all of the knowledge that they've that we've collected and it's all going to be online as well um, so part of the project will be to develop a portal um, but hopefully the final phase will include some sort of face-to-face -face interaction between all of these stakeholders and all these disparate regions but um, that is what I have and let's talk about it. I just had a comment. Um, at my old job, I used to work a lot with um, geospatial stuff, and there's a really good website with all the shape files for Chile's provinces. I don't know if you've seen it, but it would be really good for visualizing your data. Yeah, I'll send you the links. <laughs> what software are you going to be using? Esri? Esri? Yeah. So ArcMap and mm -hmm. ArcGIS on Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since these issues are common, you know, for the entire world, why did you choose Chile? Um, I happened to live here before I studied here, and I've just met a bunch of people. Actually, um, the person who taught me how to make biodiesel had had been to live in Temuco. And so he mentioned, oh, you're going to study abroad, you should go to Chile. So that's how I ended up. Would you be interested in, in our other places where biodiesel is being uh, produced? Within Chile? Within Chile, to say, I, my university is located in La Pintana community, which is uh, further south. Okay. And it's a not so uh, nice area in terms of security. But the municipality is very, uh, doesn't have uh, lots of resources. They have been doing uh, biodiesel mm -hmm. to fuel the truck which collects the. Garbage? Um, the trash? Yeah, but the uh, organic trash. Oh, okay. So they collect all, because in that area of Santiago, it's, it's very common to see uh, sobaipillas. I don't know if you've yeah. tried that. Fry sobaipillas, especially in the winter, mm -hmm. lots of oil from the sobepilla fry uh, and they recycle that and mm -hmm. that fuel the fuel the, the truck and it's very interesting because they're trying to get into the community the community is quite close because they're very challenged okay. but they're getting there and they're doing lots of things so if you want to contact yeah. or see how it's working i think yeah. it would be a great place although it's in santiago i don't know it's i'm you open no i'm definitely open um mostly i chose these three regions because i that's what I found, mm -hmm. and that's what I heard, word of mouth, that's what I heard. But I also heard there's a school in Puerto Montt mm -hmm. that is creating their own biodiesel um, to heat the school. So just, I, I chose three regions, but I'm sure I'll end up in plenty of other places, so yeah, that's kind of Just like a fun comment, um, I've heard that in Chile they don't tend to use like heating a lot. Mm -hmm. So maybe a fun project is uh, teaching kids how Biofuel can be used for heating. Mm -hmm. You know, encourage people to develop more heating. <laughs> 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 so we got us 